I'm Sunny Efron, the president of National Press Foundation, and I'm really delighted to have with us today three very distinguished guests uh, for our program on data and national security. Uh, welcome to Cleet Willems, a partner at Aiken, Gump, Strauss, Hauer, and Feld, uh, who has also previously served in the White House as former deputy assistant uh, for the president of international economics and also deputy director of the National Economics Council. We're also delighted to welcome Adam Siegel. Uh, Adam is a um, the Ira Littman Chair in Emerging Technologies and National Security um, at the Council on Foreign Relations. Um, and he's also uh, the author of The Right Way to Deal with Huawei. So we may get to that during this program. And welcome also to Lindsay Gorman, the Emerging Technologies Fellow at the German Marshall Fund's um, Alliance for Securing Democracies. Um, we're broadcasting this morning from the Evelyn Y. Davis remote studio via Zoom. Um, journalists on the call, I want to remind you that um, if you're a journalist and you're on this call, you may want to be applying for the Heinrich Award for International Trade Reporting. Uh, the deadline is September 30th. Now is the moment to be asking for a letter of recommendation from your editor if you've forgotten that part. So thank you all. I'm going to turn first to, we've had an awful lot of news um, of the day uh, over the weekend. So I'm going to turn uh, first to Adam. Um, Adam, if you could unmute yourself and uh, just like everyone to comment a little bit on all the news we had this weekend with the legal shenanigans that are going on, and then we'll come back and our uh, distinguished panelists will present. Adam, over uh, to you. Yeah, sure. Um, so my, um, you know, my, my caveat is we're still waiting for the details, so uh, hard to comment specifically, but my sense is um, that the deal uh, for uh, TikTok is pretty much a win for China and, and for TikTok. Um, it it um, does not, uh, in my mind, so as, again, the details uh, necessarily address the security concerns that the Trump administration um, expressed with the, with the, um, with the, the app. Um, and um, s many parts of the deal, the Chinese um, it today in the press basically said are not true. So the $5 billion the contribution, uh, the, the, the president's insistence that the company will not no longer have any Chinese ownership, uh, all those things we've seen pushed back from uh, the Chinese side. So uh, right now, uh, my, my sense is it's um, kind of a, a, a deal that, that really doesn't address the concerns that the Trump administration said they had with security. Okay, so it's 2020, the facts are murky and China is winning. I guess that's a pretty consistent theme through this uh, through this year. Let me turn it over to you, Lindsay, if you would uh, comment on the weekend's events. Thanks, Sunny, and happy to be here. I would I would largely agree with that assessment that the in, in particular with regards to the TikTok deal, we've as yet seen no evidence that it resolves the underlying national security concerns, some of which were articulated by the Trump administration and some of which were not. Um, and as I'll talk about later on in my presentation, I think it's important that we are explicit about the risks that we're, we're talking about. Um, in this case, we had a risk of data security and a risk of information influence, and it's unclear that those were resolved. We also uh, know that the deal in its current form, at least as we know now, uh, will have about 80% ownership by ByteDance. So that's the Chinese parent company of TikTok, whereas what the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States and what the Trump administration had previously been pushing for was really a complete sale. So suffice it to say, those goals were not met. Um, for China, it's looking pretty good. It, ByteDance gets to retain the majority of that ownership. Uh, we suspect that some of these national security concerns from the White House will go away. And uh, there's been a, a host of confusion over whether there are these unrelated economic uh, attachments to this deal, namely a, a fund for education, uh, AI-enabled education that actually ByteDance and TikTok would be part of. So they may even have a new business opportunity in the United States as a result of this, in addition to creating some potentially problematic linkages with US companies that actually this national security process was really designed to address in the first place. Um, and then I'll just briefly comment also on the, the development involving WeChat over the weekend, which was that a California magistrate judge issued a temporary injunction on the ban of WeChat that was supposed to take effect yesterday. 
And I, what was interesting to me about this particular ruling, I think it will be contested heavily by the federal government, but it actually drew on First Amendment grounds to make its point, uh, essentially arguing from a complaint from WeChat users that because WeChat is one of the only platforms available to Chinese Americans, uh, I'm not saying this is necessarily the case, but this was the ruling, because WeChat was, is one of the only platforms available to Chinese Americans, therefore its removal would deprive that community of a First Amendment free speech right. So there's an incredible irony here that due in part to the fact that China bans other apps, uh, WeChat is, is, is somehow granted some First Amendment protection. So I expect to, there to be a number of challenges on that front, but that's kind of where we are with, with the WeChat ban as well. Okay, Clean, over to you. Could you talk sure. also about the legal, uh, the legal battle that's going on? How, how does this work when the appeals court, you know, is this thing gonna be tied up in litigation, you know, until well after the election? Sure, thank you. Let me, let me first say, um, you know, I find this, this whole conversation a little bit ironic. It's kind of like a darn if you do and darn if you don't kind of situation. So, you know, on one hand, the administration is getting criticized for potentially banning these apps in the U.S., and now they're getting criticized because the deal that they've cut is too weak. Um, I mean, look, the, the, the bottom line is there are legitimate security issues here that need to be confronted. And it is difficult to draw these lines in the right ways. And what they're doing right now with TikTok and WeChat is going to be highly precedential because the kinds of concerns we're talking about, and I'll get into this a little bit later, concerns about data, concerns about surveillance, concerns about propaganda, um, those apply to a broad range of Chinese companies. And this really is just the tip of the iceberg. And so how they draw these lines is going to be incredibly important. On TikTok itself, you know, we don't have all the details quite yet. Um, the Treasury Department said over the weekend that this is still subject to CFIUS. If you'll read very closely, um, the Commerce Department didn't eliminate the, uh, the, the, the ban on TikTok or the elements of TikTok that were going to be banned um, on September 20th. They simply punted them for a week so they could try to work out these details. So we're not done yet, and I think we need to reserve judgment until we have all the details. But what we know for sure is that the status quo will not persist and that stronger measures will be put in place if the administration via CFIUS um, believes will be sufficient or CFIUS won't approve it. And that's what we're going to find out over the next couple of days. So I think we just need to be cautious there uh, before we jump to conclusions. But I will grant you, this is not easy. And I'm certain that there were folks in the administration on both sides of this issue trying to figure out what is the right balance. Um, on WeChat, again, I mean, the, the, the big point I'd leave you all with is this is just the tip of the iceberg. And you're going to see this coming for a lot more companies. You know, on WeChat, you know, you already have India and Australia who have moved to ban it for the, some of the same concerns as the United States. Um, now, our courts, again, are looking at this very closely. As I understand, it's a very fluid situation. I think the administration is going to appeal the decision. Um, I haven't read into it this morning to know exactly when and how that's going to happen, but I do expect that they're going to look for a pretty uh, quick resolution here because the remedy that was imposed, a nationwide injunction, uh, is pretty broad, and I think the administration does have underlying national security concerns, so I don't think the court's going to want to let that sit forever, uh, including through the election. I think on both of these issues, um, we are going to have more clarity before the election comes. And, and my last point here, and I'll get into this as well, um, this stuff isn't going away no matter who wins in November. This is not just a Trump issue. Uh, this, there is a broad bipartisan consensus. And if you look at the commentary from the Democrats on this, you know, some of them are saying what our other speakers said, which is too weak. Um, so we're going to be dealing with this issue for years to come. Okay, before we go into the presentation, I just want to clarify for those who are new to this issue um, on CFIUS, the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States. And you uh, had a lot of dealings with that committee, correct? Could you talk about, can they, ha they have a separate process from the Co Commerce Department? Could you just explain that fact for everyone on the call? Sure, that was, that, that was a question for me. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify yeah. the legal status of these parallel, you seem to indicate that there were two parallel legal processes. So I just wanted to clarify the legality of how this process is gonna play out in the next couple of weeks. Correct, so with respect to TikTok, not WeChat, uh, with respect to TikTok, um, because their parent company, ByteDance, 
made an investment in Musical.ly, they were initially then subject to CFIUS review. And CFIUS, of course, reviews investments um, in, in US companies. Um, and so that process started and then CFIUS recommended that there had to be a divestment and through the process of looking at that, they can do different types of actions that would mitigate the national security threat and that's what they're working on. Now, independent of this, there's a parallel track, which the legal authority for it is under IEPA, um, the um, International Emergency Economic Powers Act. And under this, the president has declared a national emergency with respect to foreign adversaries that can get data on Americans and a whole range of different things through inter in information and communication technology services. Now, using that legal justification, Commerce Department, the, the president said, we chat and TikTok pose a specific threat. And then the Commerce Department was supposed to specify which kinds of transactions were actually prohibited. So Commerce and Treasury, with respect to um, the TikTok issue are proceeding in parallel, and they're basically racing to figure out, can we get a solution through CFIUS, which would preclude us from having to enact this ban through commerce? And so I know it can be a little bit confusing, and it is a bit unprecedented, but they are separate proceedings that are taking place. CFIUS trying to resolve the concerns there, such that commerce doesn't have to move forward here. But in any event, the status quo with respect to TikTok is unlikely to be the same at the end of the road. Okay, thank you so much for clarifying. I think that's uh, difficult for people who are trying to cover and follow this issue. So Adam, um, initially we asked you to come on and, and brief reporters about data and national security and give us kind of an overview of how do we evaluate these dangers uh, and how do we think in a you know 30,000 foot uh, view about what is coming down the line. And uh, I agree with, uh, I think everyone agrees with Cleet that this uh, issue is not going away in the next administration. So over to you. Uh, I will um, uh, slightly uh, distinguish myself perhaps uh, from what Cleet, I think where direction he's going and perhaps where Lindsay is going is that uh, my, my criticism of it being weak is um, in some part because the Trump administration has defined this as a national security problem, uh, which I am not certain it is. I certainly think it is a data security problem. But if you're going to say it's a national security problem, then the response certainly looks uh, weak. Um, I will. Um, I think there are, when we think about China and cyber and digital threats, uh, I think there are at least uh, four different types. Uh, and so I'm going to try to lay them out here. Uh, in my mind, the kind of national security threat goes left, right, uh, although we can probably move information operations uh, a little bit in. But right now, the threats go left to right. Uh, and so the, the largest national security threat is the one that we've seen, you know, for the last decade and a half, which is the theft of um, data through cyber-enabled uh, um, hacking and operations. Uh, so the most recent one that came out, uh, of course, is CloudHopper, which looks at uh, hacking of IT services and cloud services, but uh, OPM, Anthem, Equifax, attacks uh, on uh, the press, uh, 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 NGOs, Tibetan Uyghur activists. So that is what, you know, the primary threat on data, the national security data threat as we've seen. Uh, it's been uh, widespread. The campaigns have been uh, very well de uh, developed. We've seen the move from the PLA to the Ministry of State Security. Um, the U.S. government response has primarily been through indictments uh, and, and, and naming and shaming, uh, and perhaps Cyber Command has done some disruption under its new, uh, more forward-leaning strategy of defend forward. Uh, we don't know for certain because most of the public evidence about that strategy has been about Russians uh, hacking and influence operations. The second category of threat uh, I would call supply chain threat. Um, and here the threat is both of espionage uh, and uh, coercion or disruption. So uh, if we allow Huawei to build out uh, 5G networks, do they uh, both steal the data or eventually turn off certain systems in case there's some political conflict? Um, here we've seen you know, both the US blocking uh, 5G inside of domestic networks um, and then pressuring allies, convincing allies, working with allies not uh, to, to, to use uh, Huawei for its 5G. Uh, the most successful tool has been the entity list, which uh, in May uh, of this year was revised again and really cut off 
uh, Huawei from uh, semiconductors and, and, and other technologies that, uh, that the US uh, uh, semiconductor uh, automation and semiconductor design, um, which is really an area the United States uh, dominates on uh, and is really uh, uh, kneecapped uh, Huawei as it, as it moves forward. The, the third is where I think TikTok comes in, um, which is this concern about big data and data collection going to Chinese firms uh, and the, uh, the reality that under the national intelligence law of 2017, Chinese firms uh, appear to have to cooperate with the Chinese government um, uh, for espionage or counter espionage purposes. Um, and so the issue is, you know, what data is, are, they, uh, are they holding? Can it then be matched with the first category of data that's collected um, in other type of hacking? Uh, can you use uh, other types of artificial intelligence or big data to then um, use it for uh, approaching possible people to turn them uh, into spies or in counterintelligence um, or in other types of um, uh, spying? Uh, so that we see around TikTok, we see that uh, surveillance uh, on WeChat, uh, it was behind the, the decision to force uh, uh, um, the grinder deal to be um, unwi unwound uh, and uh, Beijing Kunlun to have to sell its uh, share. Uh, there's a huge market in third party sellers of adware, which we haven't talked about at all. Um, so lots of personal data floating around the Chinese market that we haven't talked about uh, any regulating in any, any way, shape or form. But the, the tools that the U.S. government has talked about, uh, um, as was Khalid mentioned, is the uh, CFIUS process and uh, IEPA, uh, and a lot of this has come under the um, State State Department's uh, Clean Networks Initiative. And then finally, um, is this concern about um, as more and more Americans uh, use uh, Chinese social media platforms? Because I agree with Khalid, this is not the this is not the first one, uh, not the end of the of what is probably going to be a wave. Um, uh, what do we know about how that information is either censored um, or used for uh, influence or propaganda? Uh, so certainly stories about how TikTok uh, was treating data about uh, or uh, posts about Hong Kong uh, and Uyghurs and, and others. Um, and we know the Chinese have been exploiting our own platforms uh, on Twitter and, and Facebook. Uh, and so, so far the response has been, uh, again, um, focused on TikTok and, and, and WeChat through the, through the State Department's Clean Network Initiative and, and CFIUS and, and, and IEPA. Um, and then the, comp, uh, the social media platforms themselves, uh, you know, now when you uh, interact with um, uh, CCTV or, or any of the Chinese public media, it comes with a little um, uh, check mark saying that it's a, a Chinese state media. Uh, so efforts to expose uh, Chinese influence uh, on, on our own platforms. So uh, again, uh, you, uh, you asked for kind of a, a typology of the threats. Uh, this is how I think of them. Uh, Lindsay and Cleet might have a different uh, a breakdown. So again, you know, my, my, uh, my sense is from a national security perspective, the biggest threat uh, so far has primarily been the, the hacking. Uh, TikTok, uh, in my mind, is a data uh, and privacy threat um, it has not, uh, in my mind, reached the level of national security threat. Um, and um, I will end uh, by just saying, uh, yes, um, the Democrats are going to do many of the same things. Uh, there's no doubt that these issues are, are, are going to continue uh, if President, uh, if, if Biden wins uh, the election, there is there's going to be a certain um, continuity there. Um, and uh, we have not seen the Chinese response yet. So that the point I will end with is that we're still waiting to see what the Chinese will do. They've been fairly restrained. Uh, I think they will be restrained about uh, TikTok because, as I said, I think they will, and they're already packaging it as a win. Uh, but this weekend, the Chinese finally published the details on the entity list, their own entity list, um, and how it might be uh, applied. Uh, and in, in, it, its uh, categories for um, application are extremely broad. So. Uh, anyone that uh, affects the, the, the security of supply chains in China, uh, sovereignty issues, national security issues, uh, so a whole range of things that the Chinese can, can use to respond uh, if they want to.